Welcome to another video. I have an equation here that has an exponential expression on the left hand side and on the right hand side is a polynomial equation. Well, I think this is called a transcendental equation because you cannot just use exponential strategies to find your answer or use polynomial strategies. You just have to be smart. And because on this channel, I have a lot of smart people, I am going to try to find all real values of X. Now, I have three ways of solving this problem. The first way is going to give us the only integer solution. The second way is going to give us two positive solutions. But the third way is going to give us all real solutions, including a negative solution. Now, I don't know if this video will be long enough to accommodate all of them, but I'm going to start with the integer solution and the manipulation strategy. Let's get into the video. So for any problem that looks like this, a good strategy that would give you one answer actually, and that would be this. You want to make sure that this X stays with this guy and this eight stays with this guy. So that's the manipulation we're going to make. Okay. Or do. So that means if I want to get rid of this X, I have to divide this by X. If I want to get rid of this eight, I have to divide this by eight. So what I could do is, mm, I am going to divide, I'm going to raise both of them to 1 over 8x. And that way, both of them will get, will be away from wherever they are right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 4 to the x raised to 1 over 8x will be x to the 8 raised to 1 over 8x. Now what you will notice is that this x will cancel this x when you multiply out. Remember this x is on top, it's going to come up here. So you end up with 4 to the 8th to the 1 over 8 equals. This 8 will cancel this 8 so that what you have is x to the 1 over x. Look, they're almost the same. It's just that we cannot claim that x equals 4 because this x is not 8. But you might just think, just by tiny little manipulation, you want to start with the smallest number. What if I raise, I multiply the top and bottom by 2? What's going to happen? Okay? Or you say, I'm going to raise this to a certain power and also take that as the root. Watch what I'm saying. You can write this as 4 raised to power 1 over 8, raised to power, watch this, raised to power 2 over 2. You see, this doesn't make any difference because this is just 1. We're not touching the right-hand side. The right-hand side still stays as 1 over x. Now see what happens. I'm going to move this 2 in. I'm going to move this out. So that what I have is going to be 4 raised to power 2. This 2 stays here. This 1 over 8 goes to join this. So you have 1 over 16 equals x to the 1 over x. If you pay good attention, what's inside the parenthesis is now 16 from your laws of exponents from algebra 1. You can see that this is going to be 16 raised to power 1 over 16. And that is equal to x raised to 1 over x. So just by comparing, you can see that x is equal to 16. Now, whenever a problem tells you to find the integer solution, this is the only integer solution. And this is your, this is the fastest way to get your answer. Just do this manipulation. Move the x to join the x, move the number to join the other number, and then this is where you might have some problem. You have to choose if it's going to be 2 over 2 
or four over four or six over six or eight over eight. You just have to keep going until you find a number that represents this expression. Okay, let's go to the second strategy. So the second method is you looking at the two numbers on either side. See, this is a power of four. If the left-hand side is a power of four, the right-hand side must be a power of four, okay? Yeah, there's no two ways about it. There are no two ways about it. Speak good English. Okay, now. And if this is a power of four, this is also a power of two, then it means this also is a power of two. In fact, you can see that x is some two raised to power something. You just don't know what it is, okay? And we also know because this side is a power of four, this number must be divisible by four. Otherwise, this equation will not be valid. Just imagine if this was not divisible by four. So you raise a number not divisible by four to a certain power, and then it's now a power of four. It doesn't happen like that. So based on the properties of these two expressions, we can make the following claims. Observe that x is divisible by four. Therefore, we can say that x is sum four times a number, let's call it n, let's use n. x is four times n. Okay, this is going to save our lives in the future of this video. x is a multiple of four. That's a fact. Also observe, that this expression here can be written as two raised to power two raised to power x. See, we can write this as two raised to power two raised to power x, which is gonna be equal to two raised to power two x. That is what is on the left-hand side. It is equal to this number, which is x to the eighth, okay? Because this is a power of two, this two must be a power of two. We just don't know what power of two is, okay? So we say, let, hey, n is an integer, is an integer, okay? Because definitely it has to be an integer. Now, we can say x is some power of two, but we don't know what it is. So we can say, let x be equal to two raised to power some number, let's call it k. Then two to the two x will be equal. So this is two to the two x will be equal to on this side, it's gonna be two to the k raised to power eight, which is the same thing as two to the 8k. So from your basic algebra skills that you have, if you can write the left hand side in base with a base of 2, this one also with a base of 2, it means that 2x must be equal to 8k. So we have 2x is equal to 8k, which means that x is equal to 4k. Do you see that? So now we have two things. We know that x equals 4n because x must be a multiple of 4. And x equals 4k because when we express the exponents, we still don't know what k is, but k is going to be the exponent of 2 when you write x in terms of 2. In fact, x is purely 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. There's nothing more. Okay, there can be three or any other number that you can write as a base. It has to be two purely because this is four. Now, from this, if you compare this to this equation, x equals 4k, also we have x equals 4n, clearly n must be equal to k. n equals k. 
this is going to save us in the future also. Okay, now look at the beauty of what we just did. Let's come back here. Since x is equal to 4 times n, if you write this as a power of 2, then this is going to be, what did we say it's going to be? If you write x, 2 to the k. Watch this. 2 to the k is equal to, if you write this as a power of 2, is going to be 2 squared multiplied by, what did we say n was? n is equal to k. Therefore, k, which is the power of 2. Once we find k, we can find x. This power of 2 must be equal to, look, if you divide both sides by this, you're going to get k equals 2 to the k divided by 2 to the second, which is k minus 2. <sighs> now, this equation is the secret to our answer, because now, I can think of a number k that is equal to 2 raised to the power k minus 2. If you test small numbers, you will see that this works. Definitely, we don't want to try a negative number because an exponential function can never give you a negative answer if the base is this way. You can see, since this one is positive, you can raise a positive number to anything and get a negative. So the smallest number, you can't even get a zero. Okay, but let's just assume that we want to start from zero so we know where to go. Let's see what happens. If k, so let's, let's test numbers. Testing, testing some small numbers. Okay, let's test k equals zero. If we test k equals zero, you have zero equals two to the zero minus two, which is one over four. You notice that what we have is zero is equal to one over four. They are not equal. Actually, zero is less than one over four. So this does not work. If we test one, watch one equals two to the one minus two. One minus two is negative one. So two to the negative one is one half. You see, suddenly, this is now greater than this, so, but still not true. But this was less than this. Now, this is greater than this. So it's possible that there's something hiding in the middle there. We don't know. Okay. Let's try two. So you have two equals two to the two minus two, which is equal to zero. That's one. So two, now this, so now this is greater than this. This is greater than this, yeah. It, there's no sign that anything cool is happening, okay? So this is greater than this. Let's try three. Three equals two to the three minus two, which gives you two. This is greater than this. Ah, so we have um, four equals two to the four minus two. That gives you four. Oh, we got one, that's correct. So when k is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 squared equals 4. So we got one solution to this expression. So that means we can go here and say when k is 4, x equals 2 to the fourth, which is equal to 16. Let's see if we can find more answers. What about 5? Five? 5 equals 2 to the 5 minus 2, which is equal to 8. Okay, now we have crossed the line. Oh, not correct. If you keep going this way, this will always be greater than this. You will never get equality if you keep going. Okay, so if you're looking for any type of equality, you want to go back because now the exponential function will be growing faster than the linear function. So you can see this is greater than this, this is equal, this is less, this is, this is less, this is less, this is greater. So it looks like there is a tiny twist 
between zero and one. So let's go here and investigate. Why don't we try the number one half? So this is 0 0.5, it is greater than this. So it looks like it is greater, this is less, this is greater. So we go smaller again, and then we're gonna find another equality where we have k is approximately 0 0.3 is another solution. Okay, so we have two solutions. So k is approximately 0 0.3 and k is equal to, what did we get? 4. Therefore, we can say that x equals 2 to the 0 0.3 approximately. Let's do approximately, okay? And k equals 2 to the 4 are solutions. What is 2 to the 0 0.3? We already found 16 the first time. So the second time now we get this one. So we need one more solution that is real. There are other solutions that are not real, but as far as real numbers are concerned, we got two positive solutions and there's gonna be a negative solution in the next video. Never stop learning because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.